Good morning, everybody. Looks like we have an insert again for announcements. So, Timber Rattlers is coming up. Uh, please, if you want to go to that, please sign up. Uh, Carol stopped in this week. We will be putting a deadline on sign up coming up soon uh, so that we can actually lock in those group rates. Um, kind of hard to lock those in if we don't know early enough how many people want to go. Um, there's an insert in there on that. Thursday services throughout the summer months. I talked with the people that normally attend them. Uh, we're dropping down to the first and third Thursday. Um, I think once Bob and I are done with our stewardship course, we'll probably resume that. Uh, we did start our stewardship course uh, with Reverend Andrew Warner and uh, Reverend Andy, I don't know his last name, <laughs> Reverend Andy, uh, and that was pretty good. We, we sat in my office on, was that Thursday night? Thursday night, and we uh, huddled around a small computer and learned some good stuff, a lot of different statistics about church giving and what that kind of looks like across the board. Um, it's some very interesting people. Uh, somebody from Two Rivers, somebody from originally from Glendale, but now in Eugene, Oregon, uh, Hawaii. So it was a cool class. And that's running for, I think, the next two months or so that we'll be taking this stewardship course together. Um, joys and concerns. So when we had the, I think we're going to call it the Peace Visitors uh, meeting instead of the Care Committee, um, we talked about how with the joys and concerns, that is currently in the bulletin, uh, it's very full. <laughs> and the thing is, is that I don't know half the names in there, and we don't really know how to follow up on it. Uh, so what we're going to do is if there's a joy and concern that's listed in the bulletin uh, that you would like to remain there, please let the church office know. Uh, or Yes, preferably Shelly in the church office, not myself, because I don't make the bulletins. Um, and then I forget what the timeline 10 a.m. on June 15th. After June 15th, we're going to clear out all the joys and concerns, and then we're going to have a follow-up system put in place so that as we get new joys and concerns, we're going to follow up with them you know, two weeks later so that they're not just perpetually there. You know, if somebody gets healthy, there's not necessarily a reason for them to still be a concern. You know? So. Uh, I think installation is coming up. This afternoon, please come hang out for that. The search committee did a wonderful job setting up yesterday. Uh, the sensory room is still a work in progress. Uh, again, there's a list on the church website of items that we need for that. If you feel so called to donate an item, uh, I believe we've also talked about what the total cost is probably going to be for all the items. Uh, we'll need to start looking at uh, carpeting, what we're going to do with that since there was water in the room uh, and some of the other renovation projects, which might have been talked about at the last council meeting. New members course, we're looking at scheduling that this week. Uh, well, I sent out the email this week. We've got to follow up on that. And then committee and group rosters, we've got quite a few. I know there's a couple we are still missing. So if you are on a committee and group that has not sent one in yet, that would be fantastic. If you could, since we're going to do the new member course very shortly. And I think the last thing is that it's uh, strengthening the church offering Sunday and Pentecost. Uh, so there's a little insert that you can read about strengthening the church. Uh, it's one of the five for five special offerings, which is something this church has been for a long time. Uh, it's a great way to show our support of, of the, the wider missions of the church, to show our support and our links to the association. So even though we're a congregational denomination and we believe in our own power, our own authority, uh, it's also great to share those resources. So if you feel so called, uh, please consider giving to strengthen the church. I think that's it for announcements, correct? Anything else? Perfect. With that being said, if you could please rise and join me in the opening hymn. This is the day, number 84 in the hymnal.
Good morning. At this time, remembering to respect our members who wish not to partake, if they see them sitting in their pews, uh, please respect their wishes to be socially distanced. But may the peace of Christ be with you. Please share this peace right now. Not the peace be with you, sir. Yeah. Good morning. Sorry. Are you ready, Kristen? Yeah. Okay. Please join me in our responsive call to worship. Divine Teacher, whirl around us with your wisdom. As the holy winds fill our lives with dreams, empower us to live God's hope in this world. May the divine gales of this day move us to know the love of God. And please join me in this unison invocation. Holy winds of mystery, as the dawn breaks forth, your spirit exhales you your intentions for our world. As new chapters and eras arise in our lives, your spirit invites us to wisdom that only comes from you. Open our souls to the wonders of your being. Settle our hearts when questions surround us. Fill our minds with the knowledge that your spirit will lead us forward. Amen. And if you could please join me in our unison prayer of reflection and growth. Loving God, divine comforter, peace is absent from our hearts. From pain to grief, from turmoil to frustrations, we yearn for what we lack. We ache for the pains and injustices of this world to cease. What we forget is to pause and voice our concerns to you. How can we better integrate your presence in our lives? When have we forgotten to include you in our joys and heartaches? Move us to seek you and speak the burdens of our hearts to you. May your spirit refill our souls with peace. Amen. And please receive this assurance of grace. 
The Spirit of God delivers grace and peace as we move through our journeys and inspires us to connect with God and neighbor to create a world of hope and joy. Amen. At this time, uh, I invite the Peace UCC Choir forward, uh, for he never failed me yet. I know God is able to deliver in time of storm. I know that'll keep you safe from all earthly harm. One day when my weary soul is at rest, I'm going home to be forever blessed.
Thank you very much, choir. But I swear, every time I'm liturgist, I have to follow that stuff up. <laughs> and then the other thing, when I signed up to be liturgist today, I didn't realize it was Pentecost. There's a lot of hard words to pronounce in our Testament reading. <laughs> but as many, many of you know, my father-in-law is a retired pastor, so I've been down this road before. But I'll do the best I can. First scripture reading is from the New Testament book of Acts, chapter 2. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like a rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues, as of fire, appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them the ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound, the crowd, had get, the crowd gathered and was bewildered, because each one, of them, each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, Are all not these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and the residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, and Cappadocia, Pontus, and Asia, Phrygia, and Pamphylia, Egypt, and parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs, in their own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? But others sneered and said, they are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you supposed, for it's only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and young men shall see visions and your old men shall, see, shall dream dreams. E even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show portents in the heavens above, the sign, above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Our second reading is from Romans chapter 8. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. For you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption. When we cry, Abba, Father, 
It is the very spirit bearing witness on our spirit that we are the children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs of, with Christ, if in fact we suffer with him so that we may be also glorified with him. Our gospel reading for the week comes from the gospel of John, chapter 14. It might sound familiar. It came up not that long ago. Uh, verses 8 through 17 and 25 through 27. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father, and we will be satisfied. And Jesus said to him, Have I been with you all this time, Philip, and you still do not know me? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father in me? The words that I say to you, I do not speak on my own, but the Father who dwells in me does his work. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me. But if you do not, then believe me because of the works themselves. Very truly, I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do, and in fact will do greater works than these, because I am going to the Father. I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If in my name you ask me for anything, I will do it. If you love me, you will keep my commandments, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. This is the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him, because he abides with you, and he will be in you. I have said these things to you while I am still with you, but the advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything and remind you of all that I have said to you. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled, and do not let them be afraid. Here ends our gospel reading. When's the last time you were so passionate about something that you were accused of being crazy? So crazy to the point that you were accused of being under the influence of drugs or alcohol. Have you ever been that impassioned? So that's exactly what's happening to the disciples in Acts today. The Holy Spirit has come upon them, and they are passionately speaking in tongues, proclaiming the truths that they have learned and experienced. They're so passionate that someone in the crowd starts telling people how they have drunk the new wine, and apparently this must have had a higher alcohol content, or something, because that meant they were drunk at 9 o'clock in the morning, which, I don't know, in Wisconsin, depends on the day. But back there, you know, that's kind of, kind of an important deal. It's that passion that I really want to hit on this morning. Because we're celebrating Pentecost today. The remembrance of the Holy Spirit coming to the first disciples, and our remembrance of the Holy Spirit's presence with us still. Now, when I say the Spirit moved them, what do most of you think? I love that Nathan chose this song for the choir today because indeed we were all doing some of the examples that I had here. In most mainline Protestant churches, the Spirit moving someone might amount to, while the choir is singing, uh, tapping your foot or your pinky on the pew in front of you. The Spirit is going. It might mean clapping during the song. The Spirit really moved you to. In more extreme circumstances, if we're getting really wild here, it might even mean that someone felt called to yell an amen during the sermon. Holy buckets. Or they might speak up and lead the communal prayer that Sunday. You know, a slight shift of the phrase to say they were possessed by a spirit elicits images of a ghost taking over a body and the person not having control anymore. But that's not the phrase we're getting at today. Toe and pinky tapping, amens and prayer leading are hardly the stuff that will make a crowd ask if you are drunk on a Sunday morning. When is the last time you felt really moved by the Spirit? The last time you let it feed your soul and lead you to honest ministry? Was it caring for your son or daughter when no one else would? Was it standing up for the rights of oppressed people 
some of your friends who you knew wouldn't agree? Was it giving your time to an organization that had a cause you truly believed in? When is the last time the Spirit moved you? Now, friends, I spent over 10 hours in the car these past two days, so I've had quite a bit of time to think about this sermon. You know, we could have talked about what the Holy Spirit is, which is a very metaphysical discussion. We could have talked about what that feeling might be like when we're called, which is fitting for an installation Sunday, but I'll let Reverend Westrich handle that this afternoon. But I really thought about it, and I want to talk about letting the Spirit move in us, in this church, today and going forward. Because friends, for nearly six months I've been here at this church and almost nine months here in this community, there are needs in this town that are not being met. There are people suffering in this town that are not being helped, at least not meaningfully. There are people in this congregation who are lonely and need community. There's a whole earth out there that needs our care to ensure its survival. Friends, where is the Spirit calling us? What could we do to make a difference? What fire has been lit on our heads that can only be put out by the living water of ministry? What would it look like to more meaningfully help someone that comes in who is homeless than to just give them a gas card and a grocery card that might get them through a week? What would it look like to develop a mentoring program with the youth to build relationships instead of focusing on generational differences? What would it look like to have honest community with those around us again, the kind where you knew you could call on your neighbor or fellow church member, no matter who they were, and they'd be there, no problem? Where is the Spirit calling us? Pentecost is indeed a miracle, friends. It is descending off of these disciples, away from the comfort and fold of Jesus' motherly wings, out into the world empowered with the flame of the Holy Spirit. Are you ready to fan our flame? To let that spark that's known right now as Peace UCC grow into this raging fire that goes where the Spirit blows it? Friends, I see it. It is in my dreams and I have heard it in your voices and conversations with you There is something there, and it is beautiful, and it is ready. This church is alive and well. Let us take that next step and exercise that health. Let us together answer our call and follow the ministry of Christ to the best of our ability, not just C, a C-grade average. I truly am proud to be with you all. I'm so excited for our journey ahead. So as we recognize this day, Pentecost, as we recognize the installation this afternoon, let us do great and amazing things together. (coughs) May it be so, and amen. If you could please join me now in our pastoral prayer. Dear Holy (coughs) Spirit, the aspect of the Trinity that we are so in tune in. Be with us. Move us more than one appendage at a time. Help us to be the body of Christ working here on earth, living, breathing, participating here on earth and in this community known as Shawano, Wisconsin. Let us be the opportunity for ministry in this town. Give us the courage. Give us the fire, the passion. Give us the compassion to care for those that need the care. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, very counterintuitive, because I did not write this sermon before the order of worship. We're going to sing Spirit, Spirit of Gentleness now. (laughs) Number 286 in the hymnal. If you're comfortably able to do so, please rise.
Please be seated. As promised for our UCC moment today, uh, this is the following paragraph from my ordination paper, where I talk about what the UCC has been doing since 2005, rather fitting for Pentecost. These are resolutions and actions I could think of readily at the time of writing uh, without doing any research that I remember being passed and acted upon throughout my time within the UCC. So we were close. But what about what's happened in the 16 years, it was 2021 when I wrote this, since 2005? What has the UCC been doing since then? Here are things I can think of off the top of my head. Stood with Native American peoples against oil pipelines cutting straight through their protected lands. Provided sanctuary for immigrants crossing the American-Mexican border while fleeing tyranny from their homelands. Committed to providing more accessible spaces for disabled people across America. Promoted trauma-informed care amongst its congregations to better support mor morally injured veterans returning from the wars in the Middle East. Developed an open and affirming curriculum to help educate congregations to be more welcoming. Committed to helping end the homelessness crisis in a variety of ways, with some churches going so far as to build tiny homes in their parking lots. And most recently, created safe places and sanctuaries for refugees from Afghanistan who have come to a country where many still consider them terrorists. My point with this UCC moment is, and a valid one for this Sunday, we are a denomination of action. Let that spirit empower you so you may live into these words we say. Let the spirit fill you so we can continue to work towards a just world for all. That's what I got for that. For the reflection on giving, because of our love for the divine giver, we seek ways to share our love through our treasures, talents, and time. Whether we give in this hour or throughout the week, may we remember that God's spirit encircles these gifts with hope. I'll invite Bob now to collect our offering. Please rise and join in our doxology. Please join our unison prayer of dedication. Holy winds of excitement, may the gifts we share today and throughout this week nudge us to dream your dreams. May our giving inspire us to embrace your visions for the world. Holy Spirit, enliven our souls to create your realm of justice and peace on earth. Amen. Now, before we move into the next hymn, is there anybody who has not received a communion cup yet? Um, if so, I believe we had three left that were over on that table over there. So if you need to go grab them, please do that real quick. Um, and if we run out, we do have some backup stuff up here as well. So, and while they're doing that, we can join in our next hymn. Uh, Jesus took the bread, number 343, and we're doing verses 1 and 4 from this hymn. Thank you.
God be with you. We lift up our hearts and give thanks to God who meets us where, where we are. Let us pray. Holy and loving God, we offer thanks for this day, for the beauty of the earth, for your love and care for every creature, for this table that is before us. We offer gratitude for the community that surrounds this table and for the many tables and faces we cannot see that make up this ceremonial banquet. We rejoice that you call the entire human family to this marvelous mosaic. We offer prayers for those without tables to gather around with food to eat, without beverage to quench their thirst. Communion and community are for them too. We are humbled by this reality as we prepare to receive the gift of grace. Remind us to be gracious with one another. Meet us in our striving and hear us as we pray the words Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. You may be seated. God, we remember on the night of betrayal and desertion, Jesus took bread, gave you thanks, broke the bread, and gave it to the disciples, saying, This is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, Jesus also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Consecrate, therefore, by your Holy Spirit these gifts of bread and wine, and bless us that we receive them at this table. May we offer you our faith and praise. We may be united with Christ and with one another, and we may continue faithful in all things. And please join me in the response. In the strength Christ gives us, we offer ourselves to you, eternal God, and give thanks that you have called us to serve you. Amen. So we're going to do the thing from the annual meeting that I attended again. I, I just, I really like the implications of this. We're each going to take the wafer, uh, the body of Christ, individually as a symbol that we each individually come to our faith in Christ. Take and eat as you are ready. And now, together, we will share in the blood of Christ to recognize the corporate community that we partake in as Christians together, unified through the body that we individually come through. Take and drink. From the ceremony, may you feel your spirit renewed. May you feel that connection to the Holy Spirit renewed. And may it empower you to do great and wondrous things. As Christ said today in John, even greater things than he would do. For the benediction today, in each gust of wind, may we reach out to the God of inspiration. In each flicker of flame, may we follow the Christ of light for the Spirit of God surrounds us, filling our hearts with dreams, our minds with visions, and our souls with the energy to create the realm of God on earth. Amen. Please rise and join me in our closing hymn, Go My Children with My Blessing, number 82. <laughs>